Welcome to Georgian Bay Classics. We're here at a storage facility in Collingwood, Ontario, and I have something very, very special for you to see. But first, let's go meet the owner of this incredible new vehicle. Brent Martin, welcome to Georgian Bay Classics. Hey, Good to have you on the show. Thanks, thanks, Mark. This is a very special day for us because the sun is shining and we have a project here that you've been working on for the last, I know, 15 years. We haven't heard it run. It's been in this storage facility. Tell us a little bit about this thing. Well, actually, it's been a long journey. The restoration has probably been 13 years. Uh, I bought it and uh, I had a plan in mind and I've never had it on the road. so. Like I said, it's been a long journey. What is there. it? Uh, it's a 13-window Volkswagen micro bus. And, um, 1962? 62, yes. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, this is not an original vehicle, though. Uh, no, I've done a few, uh, a few modifications on it. So uh, it, to be driven on the road nowadays, uh, you need something. Speaking of driving it on the road, I can hardly wait to hear you start it up. All right. Can you go and start it up? And let's let's, let's start do it the up. unveiling. Okay. Thanks, Brent. Nineteen sixty-two microbus, uh, Brent Martin, his. 13-year project is now being unveiled for the first time here on Georgian Bay Classics. Unbelievable, absolutely stunning, 1962 Volkswagen microbus. Listen to that motor purring away. Uh, it's got that gorgeous uh, Volkswagen sound. Brent, can you just give it a little kick on the accelerator so we can hear that exhaust? Unbelievable, unbelievable. I'm just dying to talk to Brent to find out about this engine that he's got in this uh, microbus. I don't think it's a stock engine. Let's find out. Brent, I absolutely love this vehicle. Uh, this microbus is an incredible color, beautiful designs. Tell me about your interest and your passion for wanting to restore a vehicle like this. And, and let's hear the, the story behind the bus, okay. how it all came to be. Yes. Let's start there, actually. Okay, well, I, um, I actually learned to, to drive on a Volkswagen Beetle, so uh, it, it was a natural progression for me to uh, gravitate toward the micro bus that uh, Volkswagen made. Uh, to me, it just kind of uh, spelled freedom and, uh, and that, whole, that whole escapism uh, idea. So. I tracked this uh, specific van down uh, at a swap meet in Mears, Michigan uh, from a gentleman who actually bought it from some hippies who were in Chicago that brought it from California. So uh, when I got it, it was full of dents but uh, had relatively little rust. Um, so did it originate in California or, or did it actually come from Germany? It, it would have been uh, off the assembly line in West Germany and through the VIN I was able to find out that it was imported into California and uh, it had uh, come with uh, uh, a walkthrough um, specification so uh, the first year that they uh, introduced that to, uh, to the Volkswagen van. Just coming around to the front of the bus as we look at the front of this bus there is something very, very special and unique to the, the, the markings or the demarcations on the, on the bus, the, that huge VW emblem that still, still sits today. Yes. Uh, I mean, on Volkswagens today, they still have VW. That's been a long time happening, hasn't it? Long time, long time happening, yeah. They, uh, um, they wouldn't have normally been chrome, but uh, I had a kind of a look that I was going for when I did this uh, project and uh, 
Now, the other thing I noticed about it, too, is it seems to be sitting a little lower than it might normally be sitting. Has there yeah. been any suspension modifications done? Yeah, yeah, it has lowered spindles on the front with the narrowed beam and, uh, again, lowered on the back. Uh, just to have a little bit nicer stance, uh, I went with the, um, the full four-way disc brakes all the way around just because so stopping power on this, I imagine, back then was uh, marginal at, at best. With, uh, with the drum brakes, yeah, yeah. But that, I mean, that looks absolutely fabulous. And that slightly lower profile tire? Slightly different, yeah, yeah. As they, well? They Fifth would have they originally, are, yeah, sorry, go ahead. 15-inch yep. uh, rims, uh, which they would have originally had, uh, but they were big wagon wheels, so this looks a little bit And more. they were fairly skinny, I think, as well? Yes. My yes. understanding is that the bus uh, in a wind, if you ever got in a crosswind in a bus, you would uh, certainly be hanging on for dear life. <laughs> yeah. Would that be fair to say? <laughs> that would be fair, yeah. So Brent, if you could, let's just uh, have a look right here of, of what we've got with these panels. Um, these are not the original panels. You've done a replacement of these panels then? Uh, all of the interior is, has been replaced. Uh, it, it's. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's it's all been replaced. It's so. absolutely gorgeous. And then tell us about the windows. Uh, what's, what's up? Could you open that for us? Is yeah, that openable? Yeah, the uh, all of these uh, windows are uh, pop out style. Oh, look at that! So you get true on ventilation through the cab, which I imagine would normally be. Uh, Pretty hot in the summer pretty without warm. this. Pretty warm. Pretty warm. Yeah. This yeah. is almost like a suicide window, though, is it not? This particular one of the other three. Can uh, we just to, just the... uh, show our viewers? Yes. It's ba it seems like it's backwards on the hinge, but that's the way it was designed. Back you know then. why they did that? No. They did that so that the front two, uh, the front driver and passenger, all would have to do is just turn around, and the and the uh, lever would be right there instead of. Instead of having to reach back, and then what about on this this particular one? It's it's the opposite. It's the opposite and, and non-suicide. Non-suicide, so, like. So to speak, so. Oh, th that's amazing. These panels uh, you had mentioned to me are still available through a, a, a company in California that you get the product from. So fine, yeah. They, so fine, yeah. They've been supplying interior parts for 20 plus years. And so. then all these screws and all these connections and all these pieces are all still available. All still available. That's yeah. unbelievable. Also notice, uh, viewers, that all the rubber trim has been replaced too. This is all brand new here. The rubber seals on the glass, so you've had all the glass out, I believe, as well, and, and redone all of that too. Yeah. It's stunning. It's stunning. Thank you. Can we go inside? Sure. All right. Sure. After you, sir. Yeah. Tell us about your restoration of the interior. Where did that happen in your restoration process, the interior? The interior, well, it would have... Um, Obviously, after paint and and uh, uh, and most of the the running uh, running gear uh, took place, but uh, it wouldn't have come with this rug, uh, as we see here. It would have been originally a um, uh, just a, a rubber mat. Yeah. Um, so again, this is something I wanted to put in just to make it a little bit more uh, user friendly. I'm not going to be hauling any furniture or anything uh, like that. So. I, I would say almost take your shoes off when you come into my living room. It's a bit like your living room, isn't it? Yeah. It feels like your living room in here. And this gorgeous headliner as well. Um, tell us about that. Did, was that done by you or did you have that professionally um, done? I actually did that myself. Um, it was a bit of a uh, learning experience, but uh, uh, I think uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. Uh, again, it's it's gorgeous. Yes, um, yes. I'm not a mechanic, and uh, I've certainly never tried anything, anything remotely close to, to doing a restoration on a vehicle like this. Um, uh, granted, it got a little out of control at times, where uh, uh, you have to keep your mind and eye on the budget, but. Um, uh, I figure if I couldn't find someone to teach me, um, I'd have to teach myself or just through uh, uh, trial and error. What would one use back in the 60s? What would this vehicle predominantly be used as uh, in its current state? Uh, it would have uh, originally been just more or less to, to carry people. It would have come with a, a three-quarter middle bench that obviously right, is Right in here. front of us. That's yep. correct. Uh, I didn't get one. 
uh, with the vehicle, so I thought that, uh, well, let's, this is plenty of room for me, so uh, it would have been predominantly just to, you know. It's a people mover. Exactly. It's a people mover as well. Okay, Brent, let's take a look at the cab. Had a chance to be in the uh, lounge. Now we get a chance to be in the driver's compartment, shall absolutely, we? Absolutely, absolutely. Go ahead. So looking in this cab right now, you've got seat belts in it, which I'm sure were not something back in the 60s. You've added that to the vehicle for safety reasons. Well, actually, they they would have come with, uh, with the lap belt for sure. Really? Yep. yep. Really? Yeah. Fabulous. Uh, safety first. And I can see that there's a handheld uh, rail. Can you show us, uh, would that be used to get in and out of the vehicle? Is that the purpose of that or just to hold on when you're going around those corners? Uh, probably a little of A, little of B, <laughs> yeah. It, uh, a standard grab handle. Uh, ironically enough though, that this came from uh, a 58 Beetle. That particular this handle. This specific uh, grab handle. And the reason why I wanted that is because it matched the steering wheel when I uh, when I refurbished the steering wheel that uh, grab I, handle. Back. That column's black, and you've got the, the gorgeous black handle that complements it as well on the dash, on the matching dash. I'm thinking that the pieces in there as well were not normally chromed. Would they have just been painted? They they would have been just painted, yeah. And of course, you've got an ashtray which back in the 60s was critical. Everybody had, everybody needed an ashtray, absolutely. Yeah. Let's just do a little walk around if we could. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about these windows that we have? These are uh, a, a locking mechanism that you can see that we have the little piece here that it locks into. So you have all these different positions so that depending upon how hot the cab is, it actually locks right in. Uh, it does not pop out, it does not roll down, it's on a sliding track. Yeah, yes, uh, that, that's uh, a Volkswagen uh, original, that little, that little gizmo. I there. love that. Plus you have the vent windows have that the have the vent windows. locks. Can you show us how those work? Yeah. They, uh... And I guess this, again, because you've got all brand new seals, this is the way they used to be back in 62 when they came out of the factory. I bet not even as nice as this. Probably Pro not. Probably not. Come on around the front. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to us about these front windows. They're incredibly unique. Can we open one of these windows Absolutely. just to show us how this works, the safari yeah. window? They have the same mechanism as the, uh, the window, uh, the, the draft windows. And, uh, and the distance you can go. It's a bit like running with no windshield, isn't it, at some point in time? Yeah, I don't know if you want you, to be going... Then, down then you'd lock it, way. would you? Yeah, yeah. What a look. What an absolute... I, and I totally understand how you would want to put a safari window in this, just because the look is, is spectacular with that. Yeah. Absolutely spectacular. Uh, this 62 bus isn't licensed yet, so it's... You have not had it out in the road, or you have? I, you know what, I bought it 14 years ago, started this restoration, this whole crazy project, and learned a lot, and uh, almost there. And it, it'll get plated in the next little while, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna drive it and have some fun. Where's your first trip gonna be? Have you figured it out? Are you gonna go for a long road trip, or are you gonna go for just, you know, around the town? What's I, your... I think uh, I'm going to the beach. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Surfboards on the top, <laughs> put the rack. Actually, they could go right in, couldn't they? They could. Right through the back window. That'd be awesome. And what about your future with this bus? What are your um, thoughts? At this point, I think uh, I just wanna, I just wanna drive it and and have some fun. Um, what lay, lays down the road, I'm not sure, but I'm hoping that when you do drive it, I'm going to get that phone call and I'm going to be your passenger to go to the beach with you. Hey, absolutely. Look forward to it. Brent Martin, on behalf of Georgia Bay Classics, thanks so much for being with us today and sharing with us this unbelievable passion of yours, this 62 thanks. Microbus. Absolutely. Thanks, Mark.